Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to Painting for Pleasure. I'm your host, Tony Visco. Uh, today we're going to do something a little bit different than I've done. Uh, I've painted a few things and we painted water scenes in the past. But what I'd like to do is to, uh, to get very deliberate and talk to you about how to construct uh, waves, especially waves crashing on the shore. It's funny, when, uh, when I went through the process of taking a look online, and there's a lot of videos online obviously, uh, I was looking for something that would be very helpful in terms of how to construct a wave as it crashes onto the, uh, onto the uh, shores of, uh, of a beach or uh, of rocks and so forth. And, and I really couldn't come up with anything that was definitive, so I thought maybe it might be a nice uh, topic to work with. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm probably going to do a couple of them. Uh, and we're doing studies now. These are these are not finished paintings, so I don't want you to think in terms of my completing a painting. More or less, I want you to think in terms of how to construct a wave as it crashes on the shore. What we're dealing with here is we're dealing with a lot of different disciplines. Um, we're dealing with the uh, white water as it breaks over the wave as it crests. We're dealing with um, water as it f foams and rolls onto. Uh, onto the other white water as the, as the wave crests. Uh, we're dealing with basically uh, a background. We're dealing with the cone because as you know when a wave, if you've taken a look at the action of waves as they break, it, it creates a cone that is illuminated a little bit more. It's lighter at the top. You can, it's more translucent. So there's a number of ways to handle this and because we're painting here, uh, in painting for pleasure with uh, a wet on uh, wet technique and a dry on wet technique. I'm going to stay, try to stay with that discipline. Uh, I don't want to tighten up. I don't want it to look like an oil. I don't want to look like acrylic. I'm not going to do this tight. Um, actually, to be honest, it might be easier to handle this stuff in oils or acrylics, but uh, the key element is to, if you're going to become a watercolorist, if you're going to learn to paint in watercolor, you have to learn what to leave white. And in this case, we're going to leave the foam uh, as it crests over white, and we're going to leave a lot of the other areas white. Now, when I say white, uh, I've got to be very careful about that. We're going to leave the paper white, uh, but we're going to end up doing some tonal value to that as well. So if you take a look at what I've done, I've already drawn out I'm going to do two, probably two pieces if we have time to do it within the hour that I have with you. But if you take a look at what I've already done, I've got a piece that's drawn out right here of a little background uh, area where we have a little house in the background and so forth. And we've got this sort of white water that's right in this area here. Let me, rather than my using my fingers, let me, uh, let me just get a little brush here. But to, right in this area is all white water right here. And then we have the, the cone or the curl of the wave right in this area, more white water here. And uh, we have the curl of the wave coming in over in this area here and, and back over here. Uh, this is going to be, as water breaks, it's going to be breaking on top of this. Now remember, it's breaking on the shore. So this white water is going to roll on top of the water that's already receding underneath it. Um, and the best way to approach this is to go down and actually go down and sit by the shore and study these waves. Um, take some photographs because you can never, my God, you can, it's hard because they're constantly moving to really get a good solid picture of them. But, uh, and then go down on different days as well. Go down on a bright day, go down on a, on a, on a uh, cloudy day and so forth and you're going to see a whole different discipline. In this case right here, we're going to start out with uh, what I traditionally start out with, which is basically laying in the sky. Now, in terms of doing that, I'm going to stand up here for a second. In terms of doing that, what I want to do is I want to get, um, I'm going to get my round brush right here, and we're going to start basically painting. And we're going to paint the sky, and I'm going to wet this area right here. Essentially what happens is that when we wet the sky, when we start with the sky area, and we wet it, I'm, not, I'm going to only come down to basically the start of the, where the waves are in the back, or where the water is in the background. 
And the way I want to handle this is I want, we're going to do it, in this case, we're going to do this as bright, with bright colors. So I'm going to use, uh, for the sky, I'm going to use a cobalt blue sky. And we want to, we want to use solid colors. I'm going to try not to, in this case, mute them a little bit. I want it to be a nice, bright, bright day. So we're going to feather this down. Water, obviously, will allow you to granulate or feather this down. Now, what happens with, because I'm painting on a camera, I have my board flat, so it's very difficult to draw this down. Uh, so I have to help it along. And we're going to do that by coming in here and beefing up the color up here a little bit more. Okay, and then what I'll do is slowly grade this down. We're using one color for this purpose. Okay, but as you can see what happens here is, is that as I add water it gets lighter. And that's the principle of watercolor and that water is a lightener. Okay, so I have my sponge here, take some water out of it, out of the brush. And what I want to do is I want that as light as possible. I'm going to reach over here and get my tissue because my tissue I'm going to hold in my hand. And I want, to, I want this lighter at the bottom. Okay, so it's going to grade down from a dark on the top to a light. So what I'm going to also do here is so that I, need, I need to intensify this a, a bit more. And I'm going to do a little bit of mixture of a light of my cerulean, my uh, cobalt blue, and I have another lighter blue, blue green, over here. And again, just give it a little bit of a start. So now, normally I'd be working with a big brush, but I've got a small piece of paper for the purposes of this demo. So, as you can see, what happens is that the softness of the water, if you darken it at the top and pull it down with water, just clear water, uh, it's work. Now, I have a shoreline back here, and I'm going to not do the shoreline right now, but I want to do, do the water and the waves up to that. So again, I'm going to go back and put some clear water in, and we're going to use a different blue for the background, for the, for the water in the background. I'm just going to go back in here and I'm going to start with my French ultramarine blue. And I'm going to use just a hint of alizarin crimson with it. And come in here. Well, see, it wasn't, wasn't wet enough. So let's, let's go back here. Okay, so we're wetting it down. Again, French ultramarine blue with a little bit of hint of alizarin crimson. I want it, ba I want it dark so that you can see it. I hope my head is not in the way. Okay. And I'm going to paint around certain areas. And as I come forward, going to be a little, my, I'm going to move on to a little bit of cerulean blue. And in this area here, a little bit of cerulean blue. Right. And I'm going to come right on top of that crest. Okay, so here's where, here's where uh, we're going to come in here and I'm going to sort of try to define this by a little, with a little bit of tone, a little bit of cerulean blue here. For you. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work around this wave action right here. And what I'm doing is I'm arbitrarily breaking this up here and there. I have a cone action that's over here. It's coming in right here in this area here. And I have the same thing happening on this side. This white water is coming around. We have Again, another cone. Okay, and I'm doing this very loosely. Okay, and I'm, don't worry about this. It's this this nice scrapey sort of look, this dry brush look across there. Um, 
then uh, that that's an indicative of, of another wave or waves breaking up here and there in, in the area. Uh, because uh, when you look out there in, on a windy day, now this is going to draw. It, it, you all always find, you'll always find that kind of stuff going on. This is my way back here, way back in the background. I'm going to darken that up at some point. And uh, now that I have that in, I have my background water in, basically. I'm going to leave my foreground alone, but where I've just done this, I'm going to come back in here and take some clear water and soften this up a bit. Soften this up a bit because I'm doing, that's going to be breaking. Remember, we have, we have a curl and we have water that's breaking here and there. So we want to make sure that it's soft and spray-like. So the way to do that is just to give it a little bit of clear water and then do what I just did. Take a little tissue and just come out a bit with it. All right? That gives it the impression that you're seeing through some spray in the background. Okay, same way with this here. Windy day. Let the water peep in there a bit. Just give it a little bit of touch here and there. All right, so now I have, I've softened out the background a little bit. We'll go back, we'll enhance it a bit in a, in, in a minute, but just so that you can see the way in which the discipline works. I needed something in the background to make the foreground work. Okay, so now we have this. We have now our crest coming over here. Two things. One, we're going to get darker in here. This is, this is actually going to be, this is before the curl, so this is all legitimate water that's dark, and it's going to come into the curl, in this case, it, which, is in, which is right, there's curl, the curl's right here, then, then we have, the, we have uh, the cone of the water that's coming over here and over here, and all of this is going to be white water. So, and what I want to do before I even do that is I want to come in here with some clear water, just in here. Touch this up and touch this up, and I'm going to get some, because it's yellow, as, as you look at translucent water, you, it, it's sort of like a very, very light, light green. So I'm going to mix my, I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and a little bit of my blue, blue green, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just th throw some, just a hint of light, lightness back here. Okay, and let that alone for a bit, because we're going to end up with a dark. We're going to those will be curls, obviously, but we're going to end up with a dark blue over here. So I'm going to take some of my come over here, and we're going to take some Prussian blue, which is a dark blue. You can use Antwerp blue, Prussian blue, um, any deep dark. Again, I'm, I'm staying with solid colors just in the, for this exercise. And we're going to come in here and we've got this. This is very nice and very dark in here. Okay, and, and I'm going to, now we're going to start making wave-like motions or strokes. And it's very critical that when you do this, you carry the brush so that it, ha it, it your, or your strokes when you put the paint down in the direction in which the wave is going. So if it's coming in like this off to the side, then it's important that you, and we'll take this here, let me, let me hold the brush back here so that you can see it. It's important that we do this. We come off the page and come in and we make long strokes. Okay? You want this to go in the direction of where the wave is going. It's going to be breaking on the shore, so it's coming from this direction and going off in this direction here. Coming in from my right, curling and going off to the left. So the strokes that you make, has to, they should be, they should be conforming to, to that direction, all right? And we're going to have some of it, some of it's going to be lighter than others, so we're going to enter we're going to take some of the cobalt blue, we're going to take some of the cerulean blue, and move it in here as well. 
okay? So the stroke, as you, I can, as you can see, on the curl of the wave right here, this stroke here, it's, it's important that that stroke be in the, in the direction of where the wave is coming from, okay? That's very important. All of this stuff is going to be the same thing that's going to happen with this when we start to enhance this out here. This, your strokes are going to be in the direction, because if it's windy and it's coming in this direction, if it's coming off to my right, to my left, then you want the direction to be convincing. You want it to go in, that, in the direction from right to left. Okay? Like that. We'll work on that. So we've got our basic strokes in here, which is that's, that's important, and we, we're going to darken this up. Now, doesn't look like much yet, but we'll get there. I want you to understand that in building this, uh, I'm going to take a little bit of my blue, and I'm going to add a little bit of brown, because I need a, a little bit of my brown I'm going to use as a burnt sienna. And I want to come in here, because this wave, this is breaking right in this area. And we want to make a curl. Okay, and again, off in that direction. Now, here's what happens, interestingly enough. The wave breaks at an angle. We have basically, this is roughly a 30, 30 60, 90 degree angle. This angle here, my 45's up here, my 30 degrees coming down this way. So this is basically roughly a 30 degree angle coming off the wave, okay? That being said, when we get on top of where the water breaks, I don't want that angle to be the same because it's flattening out. I want that to be even. Now what I've just did is I went in here and I drew some of that down, okay? So I'm wetting this. And normally, if I had my paper at an angle, which I normally paint at, this would just flow down beautifully. But we're going to end up having to force that a little bit more. All right, so water, again, very important, because it's, we're painting this as a wet. We're painting into the wet. So I'm, all I'm doing here is I'm just giving it some clear water. And I'm going to come in here with my blue, and I'm going to start making strokes that are going to go across this way. Notice what I'm doing with my brush now. I'll change this up a little bit to a different color because we're this is a, a lighter, more turquoisey color, but I'm doing this at an angle. Flat brush laying against the paper. Flat brush laying against the paper. I'm not painting like this. I'm painting it with, at an angle with my brush coming left to right. And the reason for that is because this area here, as it suds in and comes up the beach, if you had that at an angle like that, it would look it disruptive. It wouldn't look right. This is flat. Now all of this is going to be down here is going to be white water. So I'm going to leave it white. And I'll show you how we'll fix that in a second to make that happen. Okay, so here's the, th here's the issue. What we have right now is some basic strokes in here, and it really doesn't look like much of anything except that we've got some angles going on, and we know we've got some water going back here. And I've got, a, I've got a, a cone that comes across, comes around here and here, and we have a curl of the of a wave that's going to be in here, and this flattening out on this side as well. So what we need to do at this point is, let me go back over here, and we need to take, where I have this wet right here, as the water hits, the, as the water crests over, and there's a lot of foam that's going to happen over here, you need a shadow. And you, your shadow has to be underneath this foam. Okay? That has to be a shadow. Or, or else it's not going to be convincing. So we've just created a dock underneath, 
And now what I'm going to do is get a little bit of a little bit, bit of my alizarin crimson or mauve color, and we're going to come in here. And we're just going to start to make this, give it a little bit of a tone. Just a little bit of a tone, okay? You see this? All this is in shadow. White water is really sometimes not even white. It's always... This is always in shadow over here. Okay. So we have we have a shadow base that's coming across. And we want to soften that. Take a little clear water. We're going to soften it. Because it's there's, there should be no hard edges, basically, in this. It's foam coming across and over. All right, now I lost my shadow because this was very wet under here. So unfortunately, I have to let that dry a bit, and I'll go back and put my shadow in a little bit more. But while we're doing, while we're waiting for that to dry off a bit, can you see all of this stuff that's going on back here? It tends to have a sprayish look to it. Okay, so let's go back here. We've got white water going back here. So that we can take a look at this. This is my shoreline. That's back in this area. We'll get a little bit of, so you can really see this. I'm gonna put, I'll put in some burnt sienna back here so that you can see this. This is my, this is a land mass back in this area. Okay, so, okay, let's say that's my dock of my land mass, and the sun's going to hit it on the top. Okay, so just to give it, so that you can see something, we'll get a land mass that goes on here. Now normally I, would, I wouldn't, well, I guess what I can do is just let's do it this way. I want to extend that out because I don't want that necessarily to come into the center. So we use some real good docks over here. All right, so we got a land mass that's going on back there. And then we want this nice and dark back here. So we want to dock on some of this up. to help this along, okay? And we have some long strokes that happen in here. And over here, okay. So we have a, a sort of a pattern going on. This should be now dry enough, let's see. This should be dry enough over here we need to put back a little bit of a shadowed area underneath. So let's see if we can do that. As this crests over, remember. Okay. And what we're gonna do is again, It's a little bit on the wet side, but we'll start to use. This is actually going slower than I thought. I was hoping to move this right along. Okay, so we got our we got our crest cresting water going on top of this this water right here as it comes in. So we'll work all of this out right now. So let me get let me go over here a bit and help you with that crest. Okay. We have a cone that we have to put in. And that's a green cone right here. And we have a dark green. 
come on right there okay and we're going to soften this as it comes down and try to draw it down by taking water clear water and running it from the bottom up from the bottom into the into the cone into the, into the top of that that cone as, as I said all right because we have some white water in there and we have some okay and again let's get this nice nice and green 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 yellow And we're going to just put it in. Okay. So all this good stuff over here is, is going to be all my foam. Now, let's go back over here. Let's create some running water. Water that runs on top of, water that runs on top. We've got clear water over here. And we want water to run on top of water. So let's go back over here and take some clear water and arbitrarily put it in and then take a little bit of darker color. All right, and then soften it up on this side so the water will look like it's running on top of, on top of the, another set of Another water. So we get, again, going back over here, let me do that again. Clear water, and I'll do it in this, you know, I'll do it in a little bit of a lizard crimson color so you can see this. But, okay, and soften it underneath. And what happens is that it creates the effect of water coming on top of water. Now, the painting is essentially done. All we really need to do at this point in time is to go in and create some strokes to make this more believable. All right. And we have, have to wait for that to dry a bit. And this is still a little bit too wet, so we really have to let that dry. Okay, it's just, oh, we're dealing with this foam. Okay, see this? Just a little bit of tonal value. Nothing, keep it as light as possible. All right. And to make this really happen over here, we need this nice and dark back here. And again, right here is the same way. Nice and dark. Okay. 
and again nice and dark. And you're going to find that with watercolor what ends up happening is, is that it tends to lighten as it dries. So we have to, some, sometimes we just have to go back in here and continue to do, make sure that it stays dark by darkening it up a bit here and there. Okay. Blue, blue, black, blue, blue, brown. I'm on, now, I've been, basically, I've done this all with one brush just so that you can sort of get a feel for. Okay, follow the pattern. Okay, so you can see what ends up happening. It has to be worked a bit, but you don't want to overwork it either. You don't want to, the biggest problem with most of us is that we tend to tend, and I, I'm guilty of this as well as anybody else, we tend to overwork the piece. Okay, but you can see this mass. This mass tends to be white and it comes over and there's some there's a little bit of white area here and there. Um, So we got a little bit of white here, a little bit of white here, and what ends up happening right now, if I can, is I'm going to take my narrow brush, and I want to come in here with some clear water, and to help this along, I've got to remove some of this. So I'm taking a thin, flat brush, small, flat brush, Going back in here and give it some some linear characteristics. Okay. So I have a crest that comes over that's sort of light green. And now it's just a question of letting it dry. And going back in, and making some final adjustments to this. Now, we st we've been losing our shadow under here, so I'm going to have to go back in and, and do something with that. Because the this is, that doesn't work unless you get a shadow underneath it. I didn't intend this to be a painting actually, but okay. So I don't know if that's convincing enough for you. I'm taking a look at this as I see it. We want to bring this over here a little bit. But that'll give you some idea as how that's taken done. And what the only other thing I'm going to do with this right now, and then we're going to go on to, I got, I got a few minutes more, and I'm going to try to go on, is I want to come in here a little bit more and create some of this. I want to wet this down a bit right here and give it, give me some sand some beach okay okay so 
my water's coming in. I've left everything as white as I can where I want it white. Um, and and I'm creating this. Now this is all watercolor. Now what I'd normally do too with this thing is I'd go back in here after this is all done. Let me, let me give, get rid of some of this stuff over here. I've got a real busy background. I have to let this dry a bit, set a lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on real quick here. I'm going to come, I got another piece that I want to do. I want to come down into this area here if I can um, and work with this area here as a curl. Let's go back and continue to try to do this real quick. I got about 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes with you. Again, let's go back and put in a sky. This is not going to be, this is going to be a different tonal value, but we'll work on this real quick. Okay. And we're going to go back in here and do, we're going to do a sky that's a little bit grayer, a little bit, a little bit more uh, less sunny day, not as bright in terms of colors. Okay, here's my sky, and the same thing with the background here, with my water, gray water. And this is just because we need a base. Okay, and with this is all spray in here. So we're going to soften that up and soften this up. Where it comes, where it becomes mystified and spray. Again, this is very loose. Okay, coming down here. Okay. And let's get, let's get something that's a little bit, uh, let's get this brown in here. We'll, we'll just do this so that Okay, it's all going to be spray, and this spray is going to come back down into the here bit. And I'm leaving that white up by the horizon line over there. All right, and let's do. Let's just take take that out of there. All right, so what happens? Again, we have a curl. What I did it this time with it is just a big flat brush. Okay, that's our, our curl or cone. All right, and that's going to be the statement right there. Now we're going to come in here with where the where the actual curl is and again it's moving in this direction in this case okay and this is going to come up like this so let's draw this out a bit this is all shadow This is all shadow in here, and we have some major shadow over here, and shadows are nothing but blues. You can create good shadows with blues and blue, blues with a little bit of alizarin crimson.
Nick. Now, as the wave comes across, as the curl comes over, the crown, the curl, comes over, what ends up happening is, is that it creates a little bit of a deep impression or deep shadow down there. Same way with down here. Again, trying to do this curl. We got a curl right here. Let's do this curl. Let's do this little bit, little bit of a curl right here. Got a small one that's coming in here. Okay, and again, it's lighter because it's, it's more see-throughy. All right. All right. So essentially, a couple of quick mo motions, and what we've done is we've done, we've created a successful curl, actually. Nothing, nothing too elaborate. Again, an exercise. This is just the way in which we want to build this. All right. Curling it up, and it's breaking over. Okay, and coming down in here where you're going to have some shadow, and I'm going to—I'll show you what I'm going to do now. This is all white water, so we're not going to use do too, too, too much with this, except put. So notice what I'm, there's just a little bit of color here and there, a little bit of stuff going on over here. That's going to be all white water. See if I can get this out of here because I've had this wick up into the sky. We can leave it alone. The danger is we should probably leave that alone. We shouldn't even do anything with it because the more we play with that, the worse it's going to get. Now, all we really need to do here is to come in with some fresh water and soften this. So we want to soften this over here. Scrub some of that out. Sort of like clouds, if you think about it. That's all this is, really. It's just some clouds. Soften this up. Okay, and then soften this up. Now, remember what I, what I said is, is that, you know, you have to let, allow some of this to dry in order for you to get back into it a bit. Uh, and it's a little bit too wet. You can see this, what's happening right here. It's a little bit too wet for me to mo do too much with this. Uh, but sometimes what that does is that creates some interesting effects, spray-wise. So what do we probably have about five minutes, I think, so left? Here, let me just go back in here and try to create a little deeper shadows under here for you to take a look at. And right now, it's all it really is doing is it's just blending itself, it's just blending itself into um, into the underside. Okay. Now this one here, I, I did a little bit more, more of an in-depth drawing on it. So what I would do at this point is take my small brush, let's say my, I have a rigger here, and try to give it some more definition. Because the narrower lines now, we want to play with this. All right, we want to do this. We want to create a dark, wrong color. We want to create, we don't want that. To. 
โอ้What I did is I I put the wrong color in because it just didn't work well. So I went in with some sienna, and I'm gonna so the squiggle is down here and there. Okay. All right. Just to create, I'm going to do the same thing with with this over here. And again, come down here and create some interesting patterns where that breaks over, because that's mostly white water, and. Once it breaks in down in this area, we are going to fill that with some dark shadows. And you notice what I'm doing here? So I'm just squirreling this, squiggling it. And again, coming back over this way. Same way with this. And we're moving right along here because I'm trying to get this completed for you. But this will give you the idea as to what we want to do. Okay, try to come over here. This is a little bit too dark in here. I'm gonna have to lighten that up a bit, but we'll, we can do that later. I don't have, but this will give you an idea as to how to form this. All right, and okay, right there, and then we're gonna throw in some Let's, let's formulate let me get my a little bit bigger brush now we'll use this one here I don't want to go back and take and this is this is needs to be darker back here Okay, see? All right, so, again, try to give you a couple of real quick, quick studies, quick sketches on being able to handle the crest of a wave. Um, let me just, let me give you an idea as to see if, see if we can get a real quick shot, but that'll give you a sort of an idea. I painted it. Uh, what I'm really looking to do is to, um, I don't think this came out quite like I want, but it's still a little bit wet. It's still a little bit wet, but you get the idea. It's just a matter of shadows. Because white is, the white water is never really white. 
and then I would go back in a little bit later and then just massage it here and there and, and pull in some real darks. So let me just talk a little bit about, let me do this. I've got, uh, I'm going to talk to this camera over here right now. Here's what I want to see if I can get you to take a look at. And I'm going to put hold this up right now. What we're dealing with is we can handle spray foam in a number of ways once this is dry. You get a toothbrush, put a little bit of white on it, like a, a, a little bit of a white paint from the watercolors if you have Chinese white or white from gauche, and just take your finger after you put it on the white and just, just spray it into there and it'll create the foam that you want. Um, but again, we're talking about white water as, uh, as it crests and uh, the white water on the shore right here, these areas right here. And in this case, we had a glow in the sky and sort of and, and that kind of thing here. And we've got a couple of rocks. But notice this curl, how it comes across here. Let me see if I can do this. This curl comes across right here. And, you know, you've got this white water that comes in over here. And you've got the cone coming down here, spray foam, and so forth. So that's generally uh, how it goes about, how you go about handling uh, water as it breaks. Now it's going to take some work because as you can see, I mean I just did a couple of real quick sketches here for you, but uh, it's something that you're going to have to work at. That being said, I really hope that you're able to get something out of these uh, programs that I'm doing. Uh, you know, painting for pleasure should be about the pleasure of painting. But quite frankly, it takes a little bit of exercise and a little bit of work and practice. I teach classes right now. Um, you know, you, you can uh, probably go to the Plymouth Guild for the Arts. I've got uh, classes going uh, on Monday evenings from 7 to 9. Probably not going to do it this summer between now and the next six sessions. But um, uh, maybe we'll pick it up after that, depending on how many you know, of the uh, uh, students that, uh, that uh, show up. I don't generally want to, I'd like to do this in the summertime. We'll probably wait till the fall. But the idea here is, is that you can't do this without work, without practice, without continually doing it over and over again because it takes a while to learn how to use a brush and how to use the paint and how to apply it and the right consistency between the pigment and water and how it's applied to the paper. It's very critical that you sort of practice this and practice it on small sheets. I'm working on, what I did is I just did two paintings on a uh, 11 by, uh, eight and a half by 11 area. So you cut that right in half. Um, you know, you can do it in small, much smaller sheets. A lot of the stuff that I do for you here today is uh, the stuff that I do today and some, maybe some of the full paintings uh, that I'm doing are designed to help you to go through the motions of learning how to do this stuff. So with that being said, I'm delighted that you're with me. I hope that you'll continue. Uh, please give me a call at, uh, or, or actually email my website, please. Uh, email me anytime you want. Uh, my email is rigatoni, R-I-G-G-A-H-T-O-N-Y, at gmail.com. Uh, if you have any questions or you want to learn a little bit more, or you specifically want me to do something specific that you want to, you're looking to, to handle, um, you can catch me on my, catch my website. It's www.panthonyvisco.com. Uh, I'm on Facebook. Uh, you can uh, Facebook me. Uh, and I've got a number of paintings on the Facebook area. Um, so, hey, with that, you know, keep on painting, paint for pleasure, have a good time, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>